Hi everyone, my name is Vikas, and I'm going to take you through the basics of using CDLs and EDLs in a VFX pipeline. So an EDL, an editor's decision list, is basically an open source file format that allows the edited sequences to be transferred from one application to another. However, it is important to note that the file does not contain any video footage itself. As a matter of fact, if we open an EDL, you'll see that it's simply metadata telling the software you're opening it with, which video files to use, where the files are located, what the timecode in and the timecode out is of each clip, and it also contains other information such as which effects have been applied to the clips and the frame rate of the sequence. Now a CDL is a color decision list, and this is similar to an EDL, however, it contains information regarding to how color has been manipulated on each clip. It must be noted that a CDL can only store basic color adjustments and not more detailed adjustments such as secondary color correction, keying and power windows, for example. We can thus say that an EDL transfers edited sequences from one place to another, whereas CDL transfers the color changes that have been made on those clips. Now let's look at a generic VFX pipeline and where CDLs and EDLs will fit into that pipeline. We all know that media is generated by the camera. In this case, I'm using an Ari Alexa, but this can be any camera. The footage is then moved onto hard drive and verified, and often backed up onto another set of hard drives, and even maybe an LTO. Now this first port of call for the footage is the DIT station, and often this person or this facility will be creating dailies for review by the director, DOP and editor, and also proxies, so that the editor can start cutting as soon as possible. Now we know that raw footage is very large and very often unpractical to edit the raw footage that comes off the camera. Over here I've illustrated raw footage using the film reel icon so you can see the perforations and this will be regarded as the raw footage in this workflow document. So the first step that needs to happen is these need to be converted uh, so that the director, the DOP and the editor can watch these. And for the editor to also then carry on editing the footage. Now simply just converting these files are often not enough. It is also very common for the director and DOP to create a cinematic look while on set. It is thus the DIT's responsibility to take the raw footage, balance it, and then apply this look to the dailies and the proxies so that when the editor is editing, the director can review the footage with the grade already applied. These proxies are then sent to the editors where the film will be cut. After the editor has edited the film or partial sequences, the VFX editor can prep an EDL containing the shots that require VFX work. Now, sending the footage from edit to VFX is pointless at this stage, since the edit is using the proxy files that have already been pre-graded. And as we know, VFX needs the raw, ungraded footage to work with. The VFX editor must thus send an EDL containing the VFX clips needed to the DIT. From here, the DIT can then export only the parts of the clips needed for VFX to carry on, in full, ungraded, raw quality. At this point, the VFX editor can then also send the same EDL he sent to the DIT to the VFX department. The VFX department can then import this EDL into their editor of choice, either Final Cut, Avid, or maybe even something like Hero, and from there they can use that as a reviewing tool so that they can see all their shots in sequence, but more about that in another video. The DIT will then also export a CDL for VFX. Why? Well, let's first have a look at what VFX will be doing. After each VFX shot has been completed, it must be rendered out to be sent back to the editor. However, since the VFX department is working with the ungraded footage and the editing department with the graded proxy footage, VFX must use the information in the CDL to apply the same grade that the DIT did before sending a proxy file to the editor. This shot then replaces the shot in the editing timeline and it allows the director and the editor to watch the edit without noticing a difference between the footage 
that originated from the DIT or the footage that was rendered out by the VFX department. Besides these proxy files that must be rendered, the VFX department must also render another version of the shot in their full, high quality, ungraded version that looks exactly the way that it looked when the VFX department received it from the DIT. After the editor has finished editing the film, he's integrated the VFX shot and made all other necessary changes, the film must be sent to be graded, to be finished, and then of course to be distributed. Now this process we can refer to as the DI, digital intermediate, or even the grading phase. What the editor will do next is send an EDL of his latest cut to the DI. However, we must remember that the EDL does not contain any footage itself. So when the EDL is sent from the editing suite to the grading suite, the DIT must then supply the raw footage that can be graded. And also VFX must supply those high quality ungraded exports to the grading suite as well. And when all of these files are combined and reconnected to the EDL, we can start the grading process. Now when all of this footage along with the VFX has been combined, the DIT can also supply the CDL, which he used to create the looks at the beginning of the film, to the grading suite. Now this allows a lot of time to be saved, since the CDL contains those initial looks that the DIT and the director along with the DOP created when they were shooting the film. Thus the grading suite can simply enhance this and add to this before the film is finally sent to be packaged for distribution. And that is in a nutshell how a VFX pipeline uses EDLs and CDLs to be more productive and efficient in their workflows. Again, my name is Vikas, I'm a freelance VFX compositor, and you can find more videos like this on my website, vikaslab.com. Also, if you enjoyed this video, please subscribe and feel free to leave questions, suggestions, or comments below. Cheers.